Precise aim activated. Our team captured the area. Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today we are looking at a battleship that I sort of missed. And that's because there was a whole series of ships that were, uh, well... <laughs> okay, we'll have a very quick look at them. Uh, so, there are those two things in the Pan-Asian uh, Pan Tech Tree, or not Tech Tree, in the uh, Pan-Asian Line. And uh, they're sort of um, collab ships, or re I don't know, re redre redressings of existing things. So I wasn't super interested in having a look of them. But then there's this one as well. And this is uh, the Sung Chen. I hope I managed to not completely butcher that. I did check that out because Sung Chen was a uh, was a very famous character, person, and a person, a politician, and a leader in Chinese history. He was the leader of the Chinese National Party after the dynasties were overthrown, if I understand correctly, and is someone, despite various internal strifes, and uh, he is still somebody who's actually looked upon positively, both by the nationalist Chinese governments and the, Chi the communist Chinese governments and their respective successors. So, no, you don't get to bicker about which China owns him, uh, despite the ship obviously being, uh, obviously being uh, from the People's Republic of China, as you can see of the little red flag flying up there. And that makes sense because this is supposed to be a Project 24 ship, although that's where it gets a little confusing. So let's have a brief look at the at the little inform information box that Wargaming provides us with these things here. And it says that it's a Sovetsky Soyuz class battleship uh, with some upgrades in the 1950s. So the Sovetsky Soyuz would have been the lead ship of the Project 23 class of battleships, which were actually started. And these things had 406 millimeter or 16 inch guns. This thing gets the 457 millimeter guns in a twin mount and apparently that came out of one of the proposals for the project 24 class of battleships but uh, there we now have to well whenever we're looking whenever i'm looking into the slightly more arcane paper ships uh, the english language resources get a little get, get a little thin very quickly so i, I usually I refer back to Stalin's Ocean Going Fleet, which is, in my opinion, still one of the best reference works. It's very dry, so just reading the book is, is very, very hard, but it's extremely dense in, uh, in information. And if you need a reference on anything that has been considered anywhere between, uh, you know, the World War and uh, the death of Stalin in, in the 50s, then you are very much in the right place with this book, in my opinion, and I can only recommend it. And this tells us that... Yes, uh, there was a consideration of a 457mm main gun, uh, but it was for one of the smaller Project 24 sort of more surreal suggestions rather than for the Yamato-style uh, 70,000 tons behemoth, which was supposed to be sailing with 406mm guns. Although there might have been earlier propositions, but this very specifically references the Project 24 gun. Uh, aside from that, the 150s are apparently dual purpose, which is uh, not completely unreasonable for a post-war project. And uh, this ship could have been, had it been built, handed to China, People's Republic thereof, uh, as part of Soviet assistance in their naval development program. So, yeah. <laughs> 
So it's a it's a Sovetsky Soyuz base, so Project 23, with some Project 24 upgrades uh, that may have ha may have been handed over to China. Uh, yeah. So that's an awful lot of what ifs in the Sung Shan, but obviously that's the the only way to get uh, you know these sort of ships into the Pan Asian tech tree. So given that this is supposed to be a Sovetsky Soyuz. Uh, and it's a tier 9. Let's compare the ship to the actual Sovetsky Soyuz, which is the uh, tech tree variant, the Project 23 on the Soviet tech tree. First thing that, uh, first things of note, we do get the precise aim, but it is a slightly worse precise aim. We don't get the, uh, in my opinion, not super useful uh, extra, uh, extra damage control kit. But instead, we get a defensive AA, which pays homage to the fact that this is meant to have been a 1950s design uh, with much reformed AA guns. Uh, the hull, actually, interestingly enough, is missing an awful lot of hit points, but uh, gets a slightly improved torpedo damage reduction. Other than that, it seems to be pretty much a Sovetsky Soyuz hull with um, better maneuverability, we'll give it that, but with 457 millimeter main guns. Now, you only get six of them, but uh, you get an improved reload in return. So with a 17.5 second base reload, you actually get to fire a couple more shells. And these 457 mils are not vastly superior to the Soyuz's so 406 mils, but uh, obviously you get a 300% uh, Citadel bonus if you can manage to score them. And we have the we have the dual purpose 152s, so which well, we which do have a slight slightly slower reload than the Soyuz's 130 millimeter guns, but have a better uh, have a better range and do more damage. So decent set of somewhat decent set of secondaries uh, is missing the auto secondaries, but then again these ships are not meant to be brawling anything ever. And the AA is where it gets a little disappointing because uh, we're talking about theoretical post-war 152 millimeter uh, dual purpose secondary guns, plus a whole flurry of uh, other things that would have been, you know, really good being post-war. Uh, and uh, in that regard, the, the AA is actually not great. It's, it's, it's got a little better range, but if it wasn't for the defensive AA, mm, not not what I was quite expecting. Uh, the concealment is a, is a little better, but it's it's not massive. So, uh, what do we have here then? Uh, well, let's go through let's go through what we can do with the thing. Uh, we get the choice of improving reload and traverse, or getting ourselves more range. And I am feeling this as a more needs more range sort of thing. But I think both are are decent, uh, are sort of decent setups. But it's a tier nine, and you are going to get into an awful lot of tier ten battles. You get the choice between the historical camouflage, which is your standard battleship camo, or the uh, a futuristic camo with rail guns and everything, which uh, is your standard battleship camo, but just looking strange. <laughs> so. It's purely cosmetic, the difference between the two. In terms of equipment, there's nothing really special on the Soviet line here. Uh, I'm sailing with main battery mod 3, given that you only have six shells that you need to get on target. Uh, you have a six degree per second turret traverse, which is not terrible, so you can use that. Um, you could go with a main battery mod 2 and with the elite bonus to get the reload further down. And that might be worth a point of discussion, but uh, we'll get to that later. Uh, propulsion in slot 2 is a pretty pretty much a no-brainer at this point. And the uh, steering gear mod in 3, you could argue to maybe take concealment. But with a 17 second reload... Mm, I'm not so sure about it. I mean, with with something that has a 30 second reload, yes, but uh, not 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 sure I'm feeling that one. Now, as usual, I have been playing two games. One with a, actually no, not as usual because I have been playing a game with a regular setup and not just one game. And oh boy, was that dreadful! So I have decided to actually just play with a fully maxed chip twice today 
and to show you what the ship can do if you throw everything that money can buy at it. And this is where things start getting a little iffy. So first of all, we are on the Pan-Asian tech tree, so you can't get a legendary commander who has an APCS plus skill. And the one commander that I've picked here uh, that we can use is more suited towards the, uh, towards the Pan-Asian cruiser line, really. But uh, he's got a couple of skills that sort of match. So the, uh, the Air Defense Expert Plus for the better def AA, uh, you can get the, uh, I think you start with three, two or three, but he's got the legendary skill on the Torpedo Alert. You could also take uh, Battlefield Support for an extra def AA, but 20% uh, detection range on torpedoes is not bad. And obviously, Torpedo Reload Expert does not make any sense whatsoever. So that's sort of where it stops. But uh, we have a uh, marksman survivalist build which is kind of standard obviously with the uh, with the extinguisher and the compartment maintenance to if, so if you want to put yourself out there a little bit in terms of AA then uh, that's a decent option but most importantly in my opinion with uh, the APCS skill <laughs> because I, I, th I thought something was wrong here and uh, figured I'll try that with APCS and see see how much that improves things because uh, these guns are not fun. Um, the penetration is god-awful on these guns. <laughs> and I'm not sure if that's me, but uh, this thing cannot penetrate an Izumo <laughs> or an Iowa. Uh, which is quite strange, given that these are 457mm guns. But yeah, so you will get two games in the fully decked out, uh, fully decked out ship. And... Uh, yeah, I think we've got it all. Let's go for it. The first round is a carrier battle on everybody's favorite map encounter. Uh, we are facing Essex, Corsa Kurfürst, the Freddy, Venezia, Neptune and Gearing. So one destroyer on the enemy team plus a carrier. Uh, we do have a Riga on our team, so that might be quite useful in uh, deterring enemy destroyer shenanigans. But um, I can't quite remember if Riga gets radar. Uh, not sure, but uh, we'll see. Anyway, we are spawning on the right flank with Riga, which is good, and with a Yamato on our side. So, uh, with, uh, with the range modification from the Elite bonus, we, we get an okay range, I'd say, for a tier 9 battleship. But uh, still, you know, you don't necessarily want to get too close. So, I'm just going to slowly move forward and see where Riga is going. And provide some air cover in case the carrier is coming this way. And I just pull the AA with the ships around me, and we will see what we get done here. And uh, if the okay, I'm spotted. The destroyer is here, so I know exactly where he's. He's round about there. So warning the team. There's a destroyer right there, because that's where I got spotted, and it's the gearing. So uh, we have a bot Iowa to shoot at. So I'm not wasting a precise aim for that. We're spotted anyway. So. Um, shots out and uh, I'm already slowing down. Uh, we got two hits on target. That wasn't terrible But uh, well for reload is refreshingly quick. So we get to do that again uh, We just have to be careful with eventual torpedoes because you know the destroyer seeing seeing a seeing a cruiser there isn't necessarily having you know any incentive to get any closer and the Riga has also stopped uh, there's a Freddy over there as well. Come up. There come the torpedoes. Okay, so we'll start tanking torpedoes this game. I think we'll be taking two. Uh, yep, that was it. And uh, Riga, if you wouldn't mind, there's a destroyer. It's probably around about there-ish. Okay, that thing is by now, that bot is by now in secondary range. So let's get a couple shot out at, shots out at point blank. But um, I do have to keep an eye on that destroyer there and see what we can do about him. And the, the Friedrich der Große seems to be fl uh, changing flanks as well, so hopefully we'll have the bot out of the way pretty quickly. Uh, yep, that was some Freddy shots, and uh, that's a good time to use the first heal, because uh, you don't have an awful lot of hit points. But uh, somewhere there is a gearing. Uh, there's a Neptune. Now, if we can hit that thing, that would be awesome. So let's use the precise aim, shots out. And the dispersion isn't completely terrible, but... Uh, yep, we got two hits and one over penetration, one citadel. If you manage to get the citadels, then um, yeah, you're definitely doing some uh, some damage. And there come the torpedoes again. So the gearing has returned to the other side. I was half expecting him to 
uh, to come out and he's firing from from extreme range so I don't really have an incentive to get any closer I think Target. yeah the audacious has taken out the Neptune because these shells are a little floaty it takes them a, it takes them quite a while to get there so something like a Neptune can dodge that pretty easily okay Friedrich der Große uh, 12 kilometers and I'm gonna start tanking for the Riga because uh, Riga is obviously yeah and we get semi pens pretty consistently I would say uh, Riga is Riga is uh, obviously bow in. Yamato has buggered off or been sunk. I don't know. I haven't paid attention. But uh, I'm presuming the bots have been sunk so far. And uh, yeah, Freddy, Freddy hurts. <laughs> so uh, Riga is going to need to help out a little bit. And there's obviously that gearing around there still. Carry isn't coming near us. But um, yeah, we're now in a long range duel with a Freddy, which is actually advantageous. Yes, this is why I didn't want to get any closer because, yeah, there come the torpedoes again. Uh, and uh, more semi pens. Uh, so do keep in mind that I mean yes, this is a Freddy, but do keep in mind that this is a an APCS build. So this is as good as it's going as it's ever going to get in terms of penetration. And these are 457 millimeter guns. Um, not super convinced. I'm going to be honest here. Uh, and, and I mean this is a Freddy that is that I'm fighting at at range here, and uh, it's already proving to be relatively difficult. I'm not even he's not even in secondary range. I mean he can't push because well there's Riga over there as well and as me and uh, He's I'm not getting an awful lot done with these guns. So we're we're almost we're almost um, We're almost at the two-minute mark here, and I haven't really reached uh, 50,000 points of damage yet Which is not an awful lot for a tier 9 battleship, but uh, I think we almost got the Freddy. Yep There come the gearing torpedoes again <laughs> I mean, at this point, you've got to ask yourself, what is what is the game plan for gearing really here? Uh, I mean, this should this should finish off the Freddy, hopefully. Uh, maybe before he gets another salvo off and uh, and sinks me. Yeah, uh, the last semi pen was enough, so we switch to the high explosive, and uh, the enemy team has collapsed at this point. So I get my I get to use my last heal. Um, Carrier, would you mind? Maybe there's a there's a gearing over here that's been p pestering us with torpedoes this whole game. <laughs> and, uh, it'd be lovely if you could send some yeah I don't know send some planes over there. I'm reasonably certain that's where he last was. He's probably I don't know. He's probably uh, yep there he is. <laughs> there's the gearing. There's sitting spamming torpedoes. Hello gearing. Uh, shots out. There come the torpedoes. Riga should probably see these coming. I, and here's, here's my question. I don't know if Riga's get radar. I do need to look that up. But uh, Riga is also firing high explosive at gearing, which is unfortunate. So uh, we've sunk a couple more high explosive shots into that thing. There comes the carrier, so we can finally use our defensive AA, actually. And uh, I've switched back to the armor piercing because gearing is in a uh, gearing is in a smoke. So either Riga does not have uh, so radar or. Uh, he's uh, he's he's unwilling to use it. So if I can't see the gearing, there he is. Uh, then I may as well shoot at the carrier. Maybe I get another citadel for my troubles. Okay, carrier's gone unspotted. Uh, there come the carrier torpedoes, and uh, I get lucky that it's no flood. Uh, yeah, the we haven't really no we haven't scored a citadel on the carrier. So we'll see if we get another shot off at that thing. Uh, before the battle times out, that should be the end of the carrier. So back to the high explosive, and eventually, yes, carrier survives. I've bounced the shell of the carrier. You've seen that, right? <laughs> I've bounced the shell of the carrier. There comes the gearing. Uh, we 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 we're, we're gonna win on points before I actually get to kill that thing. So last salvo out, but yeah, <laughs> the battle is over, and the gearing would have gone down. But sixty-five thousand points of damage is not an awful lot for a tier 9 battleship, especially one with armed with pretty large guns. And this is after the APCS. <laughs> so I think I thought to myself, you know what? Um, maybe, maybe we'll need to, uh, maybe we'll need to try that again. <laughs> so uh, I, did a, I did a little bit more and uh, I'll show you a second round of, um, of this ship with a fully decked out setup. So this time around, we are playing Epicenter on Cage. No carriers, but uh, Yamato, Friedrich der Große, Iowa, Venezia, and a Felix Schulz. And uh, keep an eye on the Duncan, the a very aptly named Duncan on our side. <laughs> I love that name um, because he's he's gonna be he's gonna be doing well. So off we go. 
uh, Epicenter on Cage. Uh, only a Felix Schultz, but um, I mean, it has torpedoes, but it's not your traditional destroyer. And they're more like sea mines, really. Uh, still, it has them and they have a very, very long range. So Shimakaze. Shimakaze is actually not a terrible opponent for Felix Schultz. The, uh, Felix Schultz has the big, is going to have the big problem that his armor piercing is pretty useless against the, against the Shimas unless uh, they decide to fight him at long range. And they don't have to because they've got the concealment. So uh, he would have to use high explosive. So it's not, it's not necessarily something that's extremely good against destroyers. It's much better against cruisers and battleships, really. But uh, the plan here is to carefully get into the outer ring and uh, wait for uh, wait for the destroyers to go scouting. So the black Shima has got the right idea. He's actually heading towards the middle. The other Shimakaze is sailing the long way around outside the uh, capture circles because um, it's it's not like he's in a ship that can outspot everything else in the game. Okay, uh, body booky spotted. So let's get some shots out and see if we can get uh, if we can land them on target and uh, get some damage done here on that thing. But uh, this is probably about as far as I want to go forward. There is the Friedrich der Große who is playing long range. And there is the Iowa as well. Uh, Freddy doesn't want to get any closer. He want to get his ship, ship scratched. So a couple more shots out at that Ibuki. And he's actually in secondary range. The secondaries aren't terrible, these 150s. And, um, uh, but the penetration of them is god awful as well. So uh, you're not going to do a lot of it, a lot with it. But uh, you mean you can use them. Uh, so Felix Schultz says he bought Iowa. Now I'm, I am damage controlling the double fire here. And uh, there come the Felix Schultz's torpedoes, I believe. Or maybe they're Ibuki torpedoes. I don't know for sure. But it's two spreads. Boss usually don't send two spreads. But the Duncan... Uh, yeah, if these were Ibuki torpedoes, that would have hurt a bit more, I think. So it's probably that was probably the Felix Schultz. Uh, the Duncan has has uh, has taken them. So we'll, we'll, we'll start shooting again at the uh, Friedrich der Große at long range. And uh, can, can, can somebody finish off that? Where did my Shimakaze go? Um, one of them's running away, and the other one is 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 getting into a point blank engagement with uh, with the whole enemy team. So the enemy team's holding the. We've lost the ship. The enemy team's holding the whole capture circle. Um, I, I think the uh, uh, the the uh, Friedrich der Große has just taken a lot of Shima torps here. So I mean, he's not completely useless out there. And uh, we'll, so we'll try and see if we can f we can capitalize on that and uh, finish him off, really. And Duncan is pushing. So it looks like the battleships and the battle cruisers are going to have to do the capping here because the destroyers aren't interested. Uh, Shima is sailing around the outside, running away from the Felix Schultz and everything else. And I I'm going to push ahead uh, just uh, and I'll see if I can finish off the Friedrich der Große before he can recover some hit points. There's Venezia back there as well. Uh, but uh, I mean they're holding the capture points and uh, they're, they're 200 points ahead so we definitely need to kill some ships here. Unfortunately as we've seen in the last battle, even with APCS, uh, there's not an awful lot I can do against against the Friedrich der Große. It takes a while to get that thing killed. So if, uh, Felix Schultz up ahead. That should be the end of the Freddy which is why I pushed so far forward so I get angles and he doesn't get to hide behind the island. There's the Felix Schultz. That's Venezia Zemiama piercing coming in. And uh, yes, the battle cruiser is going to have to go capping <laughs> because Toshima is hiding behind an island at the other end of the map, at least the one on my left here. Okay, Felix Schultz smokes up, but I have the high explosive loaded, so that should hurt. Um, actually, no, it doesn't. <laughs> uh, semi pens on the high explosive <laughs> against this. I mean, yes, I, I have. Maybe I should have used the IFG. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but that was pretty. That was, uh, that was pretty disappointing, really. A um, couple more shots blind into the smoke screen. Haven't really hit anything, but uh, backing off behind the island just to avoid the, in the inevitable Felix Schultz sea mines coming in. And uh, yep, there they come, uh, slowly, <laughs> uh, limbering towards me. There's Venezia, so uh, let's see if we can. I was a bit eager there on the precise aim. Uh, fully broadsiding Venezia, 9 km. Can we do something? Uh, that should be like a devastating strike or something, right? Uh, no, not really. Uh, Duncan, in the meantime, has taken the center cup because the Shimakazas can't be bothered. And the friendly Shima is, uh, is, has come out behind his island and is getting into a point-blank fight with the Felix Schultz. I mean, he's either completely gone uh, or he's getting into a gunfight with things that he shouldn't be getting into gunfights with. Okay, low health Yamato. Maybe we can finish him off? Nope, not really. Um, no, that's, uh, but they're, they're now in a crossfire. Uh, we're two kills ahead. 
and they um, uh, they yeah there comes the Venezia runs into the Iowa uh, point blank range eight kilometers I'm in secondary range of Venezia can I maybe nope uh, semi pens <laughs> I mean, the, he was he was in the turn, so I probably hit him in the belt there. But still, I mean, these are 457 millimeter guns. They should punch clean through the belt of a Venezia, Iowa, nine kilometers. We'll see what we can do. But now I have to stop again because there comes the Felix Schultz, who is um, nope. Uh, Shimakaze takes out the uh, she takes out the Venezia, but the Felix Schultz is pushing into the Duncan. Monty has taken out the Iowa. Felix Schultz is the last ship alive, so I'm just slowing down in case there are torpedoes in the water. But a couple shots out from the mains and uh, switch them to high explosive. These obviously now over penetrate because that would be too easy. But um, I when we've we've won at this point, uh, we are even leading on points now. But uh, Felix Schultz is, tr is going for a last-minute glory rush, which uh, which is the right thing to do. I mean, what what else are you gonna do? Um, see if I can see if I can get him before the Duncan takes him uh, takes him down. Ah, Duncan was already <laughs> Duncan has torpedoed the Felix Schultz because <laughs> he forgot that these things have torpedoes. So uh, once again, we end up with about sixty thousand points of damage done, and I'm not feeling that honestly. I mean, I. C as much as I would like the Pan-Asian line to have a good battleship, but uh, this is not it. I mean, <laughs> do I have to weak spot aim with these guns? Um, I'm not, not quite certain. Uh, what I haven't tried extensively is manual aim. So, because again, if, you're, if I'm firing at 14 kilometers, I'm really on a phone screen struggling to, to get shells on target uh, with manual aim. But... Uh, um, yeah, I'm not convinced, and uh, really, didn't, I think the guns really need need some some love in terms of penetration, either sustainability or base pen even, because with APCS that was kind of disappointing. And um, if if these guns are are your gimmick at tier nine with the 457s, and you effectively need to hit light cruisers in order to to score a citadel and you're struggling to get through Izumos or even Venezia's, then, um, yeah, not not the greatest. But uh, we've ticked it off the list now, and it was one of the ships that actually uh, had some historic semblance. So even though it's not the greatest ship, if you are on the Pan-Asian line and you really, really want to have a battleship and you don't care about the... Um, care about the event sort of ship things, then um, this is your option in Tier 9. And... Uh, Maybe, maybe maybe you really like it. Who, who knows? <laughs> anyway, that's it for me today. Thanks, everybody, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.